What's up, everybody? Welcome into Tom Curran's Patriots Talk podcast. We are at the Ritz-Carlton in Orlando, where the NFL owners' meetings are taking place. And on Monday morning, we spent a half an hour with Gerard Mayo, Patriots head coach, at the annual coaches' breakfast. First time around for Gerard. And the upshot of our half an hour of conversation is that, well, the forecast calls for pain. This is not an easy rebuild. And, and Mayo was very open and honest, I thought, about the chore ahead of them in talking about the difficulty in attracting players, in talking about the critical nature of the third overall pick, in talking about all the decisions that have to be made. There is so much work to be done, for instance, and we're going to toss to a bunch of the sound from Gerard Mayo, and we'll give a little mystery science theater coming out of each one and give our input on all the things that he said. But one of the interesting things that he said was, this team currently needs magnets they don't have enough good players, for instance, to attract free agents. So you have to force them, which is something that I wrote last week, via the draft. You want a quarterback? You want a wide out? You want an offensive tackle? You're either going to have to pay a premium because they don't want to come here because you're not good yet, or you got to draft them. Plenty of draft talk coming up. A couple of quick notes that uh, really jumped out from the conversation the chore ahead of them is one in which Mayo is asking for patience. He allows repeatedly, and I think that Robert Kraft may do the same thing on Tuesday, that they hear fans right now. They hear the outcry for a quick rebuild and for spending and for moves to be made at the top of the draft that are going to seismically change this team. So they're acknowledging that. It's also very clear that Elliot Wolf, despite not having the GM title, is very much in charge of personnel. Mayo deferred a number of times both to what the Patriots will do with three overall, how they'll fill out their roster um, with the 20 vacancies, really, that they have on the roster right now. Those are Elliott questions. And also, again, the, the consistent returning to the conversation about spending. You know, Mayo... Stepped in it, no doubt about it, when he said we're going to burn some cash. And even if he said that tongue-in-cheek at the end of a Greg Hill interview on WEEI, he didn't understand that that would be used as a cudgel against him. You can't say burn some cash and not have somebody say, rack that one, we're going to use that. And it has been done. So they were um, the Patriots in general and Mayo in particular on Monday, very cognizant of the fact that people want that money spent and they want it spent now. Mayo saying we're going to try and spend it the right way. But let's throw that first portion where he talks about spending and free agencies. Gerard Mayo talking about the holes on the team and how to fill them. When you look at the roster, it looks like there's still some need to quarterback, tackle, and wide receiver. Are you confident you guys can still fill those before the season? I'm confident that, yeah, we can, we can absolutely uh, fill those roles. In saying that, though, it's going to take time. It's going to take time. Look, our, our philosophy as far as putting this, this roster together, uh, look, you want to draft and develop. When it's all said and done, you want to draft and develop. And I have 100% confidence in Elliott and his staff uh, weaponizing the offense and, and really getting us better as an overall team. I know everyone wants to talk about the offense, but one thing that you guys have heard from BB and that I've learned from uh, Bill was you know just that all three phases are very important and playing that complimentary football is definitely something that Elliot understands I understand and the rest of the staff. Mayo also asked on a couple of different occasions for patience. We're going to throw that but he says everyone wants that big signing but this is a process that will go on all the way until after the draft and I, I think the shining example is not just Calvin Ridley and the swing and a miss the Patriots took there and as it got richer and richer, I think the Patriots finally said, is Calvin really, really a $25 million a year receiver? But it's interesting in the fact that the Patriots did re-sign their own guys, and Mayo points to that as having been a priority. Those are players I think the Patriots understand, know what it's like here, and know what the Patriots are about currently. They spent premium money on Mike and Wenu. They locked up via the transition tag Kyle Duggar, so both of those guys were convinced to not hit the market more on Bueno than Duggar. Had he hit the market, probably wasn't going to find the $13 million that the Patriots spent on him. 
But the upshot is they believe these are guys who re-signed here because they want to be part of the process going forward. But it's clear that it's not through free agency that the 2025, 6, 7, and 8 Patriots are going to be formed. It's going to be through the draft. And here's Mayo on the draft talking about being in an enviable spot. Those three positions that you just spoke of, I would say this draft has quite a few guys that can fill those roles. And look, we have we sit at a very uh, enviable spot at number three where we could take someone at three or, you know, if someone offers a bag, as we would say, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of first round picks, uh, we definitely have to you know, talk about those things as we continue to put together uh, this team. You said it. There are holes on this team, but also but I would also say uh, there will be people uh, available going forward to fill those holes. So dive into the quarterbacks right now. It's Drake May. It's J.J. McCarthy. It's Jaden Daniels, perhaps. It is Michael Penix. It's Bo Nix. What does Mayo have to say about the quarterback and the readiness of the Patriots to support a quarterback? And then, more specifically, Drake May. What does he like about him? And, well, you know what? Let's just go to the Drake May, and then I'll hit the other stuff. What do you like about Drake May and the time you spent with him? Yeah, look, Drake May had a fantastic interview uh, at the Combine. He brings a lot of energy. You can tell he has that leadership ability. And, you know, also the exciting part about a guy like uh, Drake May is the ceiling. Like, there is really no ceiling with a guy like that. Now, in saying that, when we're trying to put together this roster, I know a lot of people look at the ceiling, but you also got to kind of see how low is the floor. How low is the floor? And um, I would say a guy like Drake May, he has a lot of room to grow. He's a young guy. Uh, honestly, he hasn't played football nearly as much as these other guys. So that's definitely something that, we, that we've that we looked at. Um, but he definitely is going to develop. Mayo pinned the quarterback conversation at about five guys deep. We didn't pin him down on the guys. He didn't want to be pinned down on the guys. But you have to assume it's Penix, McCarthy, Daniels, May, Caleb Williams. I hope I got the five. I might not have. If I didn't, there's your Bo Nix. How's that? How's that? But – those five guys the Patriots can have on their board, and certainly you're not going to take Michael Penix number three overall. That would be perhaps if the Patriots do deal someone you take at 11 or 23 if you traded with the Minnesota Vikings. But that mobility is something that Mayo alluded to by saying a guaranteed way to win is to accumulate, accumulate more picks. And I, and I did a story on this over the weekend. Because there's a sentiment there that the Patriots, if they don't take a quarterback at number three, are going to be potentially passing on a guy who wins Super Bowls. So get this. Since 1998, do you know how many quarterbacks taken in the top three of the draft have won Super Bowls? Two. Both of them were named Manning. Peyton and Eli. That's it. And the other guys who actually made the Super Bowl taken in the top three? Jerry Goff. Cam Newton, Matt Ryan, Matthew Stafford went and won, but he didn't do it with the team that drafted him. Did I say Jared Goff? I might have. But the list is very short, and generally speaking, they're number one overall picks, except for uh, our guy Matt Ryan. So when people talk about the Patriots needing to be a Super Bowl franchise, this is where I push back. This is such a long process. You're talking about getting to the top of Everest. When you're boarding a plane in Boston. You're not even halfway up the mountain. You're not even in Moose. Where is Mount Everest? It's in a mountainous place. It's in a mountainous place. I think it's in India. I, I know this. Marrakesh. It's Marrakesh is there. Moose is Googling. But you don't even have a Sherpa yet. So don't worry about winning a Super Bowl. What you need to do is build a team around it because the best quarterbacks and teams that win Super Bowls or go to them more frequently are ones that have guys who were not taken not only in the top 10, excuse me, not only in the top five, but in the 10 and below. Best quarterback in football is Patrick Mahomes. He was taken 10th. Aaron Rodgers, he was taken, what, 25th? You look at Jalen Hurts. You look at Lamar Jackson. One was taken in the second round. The other one was taken 32 overall in the first. Josh Allen, he was the seventh overall pick. But that was a playoff team he went to. If you don't have the structure and you take a quarterback in the top three, you might get Matt Ryan to get you to the altar, but you also might get Blake Bortles, okay? You might get Sam Bradford. You might get Sam Darnold. 
Step carefully when you're in the top three. History says you're not finding a Super Bowl winning quarterback or one who's going to get you to the Super Bowl. So what do you do instead? You trade down, folks. That's what you do, especially in a wide receiver deep draft. But if you do take that quarterback at number three, will he be a magnet? And that's what Mayo really was interesting and open and honest about. The Patriots aren't a good team right now. I mean, he can't outright say that, but he understands the process, and that's why he continues to ask for patience. He talks about the fact that in free agency, you want to attract players. He talked about magnets. The unknown is scary, and it's going to be a process, and it's scary for the players who are looking at a team. And I spoke to uh, another reporter who's well plugged in with the Ridley crew, Calvin Ridley. He said he did not want to go to New England. I said, why? He said, weather. Doesn't know if they're any good or not. And taxes. One thing I would say as you go through the draft, you want to get guys that are magnets. You know, we were, I played with the ultimate magnet in Tom Brady where guys wanted to play for Tom, with Tom, and with the team. Right, and so it kind of gets skewed, and it's kind of now it's the other end of the spectrum. It's like, what really, what pieces do we have to attract those outside guys? And look, once again, if we draft a guy, you're coming here. <laughs> so that's that has to be our philosophy uh, as we continue to put this thing together. Mayo also alluded to building around the quarterback position, which everybody understands is what the Patriots have to do right now all over their offense. They've added Antonio Gibson. They've added um, – K.J. Osborne, but they have so much more work to do. So, Mayo on the offense, and he understands we're offensive-centric right now, so he talked a little bit about that. Do you feel that the roster and the staff as currently constructed is ready to support a rookie quarterback? 100, 100%. I feel very good about the staff that we have. We have guys, you know, TC, TC and AVP and even McAdoo, all guys that – bring a certain skill set to the quarterback position. Now the balance is, look, he needs to hear that one voice. And what happens sometimes with younger quarterbacks, they have their quarterback guru, they have their coach, their quarterback coach, most offensive coordinators are quarterback coaches. So look, those guys have worked together in the past and they're on the same page to support any quarterback that we bring in. And they've also added a left tackle. I'll, I'll, I'll note as we come out of that, Chukwoma Okafor, Chukes, as Mayo referred to him. He didn't say he was the left tackle, made it sound like he would compete there. Also talked about Mike and when would he be a right tackle. He said the best thing about Big Mike is his versatility. So didn't pin himself down there, but it seems to be the de facto likelihood is he'll be out there at, at right tackle. Um, one last thing, Greg Bedard asked a good question about why the Patriots have the opportunity to begin their offseason program on April 1st, but actually decided – to begin it on April 8th. And Mayo had a good explanation for that. And it actually alludes to, I think, a point he's trying to make is we haven't had a chance to get into the X's and O's. I asked him what he's been surprised about. He said he is so consumed with player evaluation, um, roster building, scouting right now, that they haven't had much of a chance yet to get into who they're going to be on the field, which is, of course, interdependent upon the players you get. But why are they going to start on April 8th instead of April 1st? He wants to make sure they're ready. Gerard. Look, there's still going to be time uh, to put this team together. I think as the, as the staff continues to gel, not only on the coaching side, but also on the, uh, on the scouting side, as the team continues to gel, I just want to make sure that we as coaches are all on the same page before we go to the players. We've been a part of situations where, you know, you bring these different coaches in. You know, this guy has one philosophy. This guy has another philosophy. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, the coaches, the staff, we're all on the same page going forward. And look, once again, you don't win games in the spring, but you can lose them. And I don't want to fall into that trap. I want to make sure that we're all pulling in the same direction. We got Robert Kraft in the morning tomorrow, so we'll have more meat on the bone from the owner. Signing off.